February 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Mark chapter 15 from the New Testament. Early in the morning, after forming a plan, the chief priest with the elders and the experts in the law and the whole Sanhedrin tied Jesus up, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He replied, You say so. Then the chief priest began to accuse him repeatedly. So Pilate asked him again, Have you nothing to say? See how many charges they are bringing against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. During the feast, it was customary to release one prisoner to the people, whomever they requested. A man named Barabbas was imprisoned with rebels who had committed murder during an insurrection. Then the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to release a prisoner for them, as was his custom. So Pilate asked them, Do you want me to release the king of the Jews for you? For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas instead. So Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you want me to do with the one you call King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What has he done wrong? But they shouted more insistently, Crucify him. Because he wanted to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas for them. Then, after he had Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. So the soldiers led him into the palace, that is, the governor's residence, and called together the whole cohort. They put a purple cloak on him, and after braiding a crown of thorns, they put it on him. They began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Then they knelt down and paid homage to him. When they had finished mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, put his own clothes back on him, then they led him away to crucify him. The soldiers forced a passerby to carry his cross, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country. He was the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, throwing dice for them to decide what each would take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two outlaws with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by defamed him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who can destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. In the same way, even the chief priests, together with the experts in the law, were mocking him among themselves. He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also spoke abusively to him. Now when it was noon, darkness came over the whole land, until three in the afternoon. Around three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. Then someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink saying, Leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the temple curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood in front of him saw how he died, he said, Truly this man was God's son. There were also women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they had followed him and given him support. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were there too. Now when evening had already come, since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, 
a highly rewarded member of the council who was himself looking forward to the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that he was already dead. He called the centurion and asked him if he had been dead for some time. When Pilate was informed by the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. After Joseph bought a linen cloth and took down the body, he wrapped it in the linen and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone across the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was placed. God, when I read this story of your son crying out to you, saying, why have you forsaken me? That to unbelievers, like those at the cross during that day, there begins to creep in doubt. In fact, they even said, why doesn't he come save you? Why doesn't Elijah come down and remove you from this pain? But I know that's not what your son was saying. In fact, he was actually speaking words from the Old Testament. Words from the Psalm, Psalm 22, that starts off as a cry, a desperate cry for help. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I groan in prayer, but help seems so far away. My God, I cry out during the day, but you do not answer. And during the night, my prayers do not let up. You are holy. You sit as king, receiving the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted in you, and you rescued them. To you, they cried out, and they were saved. In you, they trusted, and they were not disappointed. But I am a worm, not a man. People insult me and despise me. All who see me taunt me. They mock me and shake their heads. They say, commit yourself to the Lord. Let the Lord rescue you. Let the Lord deliver him, for he delights in him. And it goes on and actually talks about even rolling dice for the clothes at the time of the crucifixion. God, he wasn't saying that you had forsaken him because we have to remember what Psalm 22 goes on to say you have answered me it turns into a, a joyful praise and celebration I will declare your name to my countrymen in the middle of the assembly I will praise you you loyal followers of the Lord praise him all you descendants of Jacob honor him all you descendants of Israel stand in awe of him for he did not despise or detest the sufferings of the oppressed. He did not ignore him. When he cried out to him, he responded, You are the reason I offer praise in the great assembly. I will fulfill my promises before the Lord's loyal followers. Let the oppressed eat and be filled. Let those who seek his help praise the Lord. May you live forever. Let all the people of the earth acknowledge the Lord and turn to him. Let all the nations worship you, for the Lord is king and rules over the nations. So God, when we read this story, even though I know at that time your son was taking on all of the sins of the world, all of the sins from the past, all of the sins that were currently happening, all of the sins of the future, including all of my sins, and there is no way humanly possible to understand that sheer devastation. There aren't even words for that. That even in that moment, he wasn't crying out that you had forgot about him. That he actually was praising you. Knowing in faith that you would never forgive about, forget about him, that you would never forget about any of your children, that you never go away, and that because of that, we should praise you. Today, God, let us go through the day praising you and being 
honored and blessed that we are here and that we are your children, that we are the elect that they talk about. And allow us to tell the nations about you. For you are Lord and you are our King. In your son's name we pray. Amen.